In the heart of Fort Point, in downtown Boston, stands 300 Summer Street, artist co-op building and home of Mark Stock, Studio 44. Welcome to the fourth floor of 300 Summer. Let's go. And this is Studio 44. Come on in. Hi, my name is Mark Stock. Welcome to my studio. Uh, in the next few minutes, uh, I'm going to give you a short introduction to my artwork, uh, kind of where the concepts came from, and uh, I'll show you some other design work that I've uh, been interested in for the last few years, that of 3D printing landscapes and cities. Uh, I hope in the next 15 minutes uh, you are educated and illuminated and eager to see more. Uh, you can always go to my website at markjstock.com or email me at markjstockart at gmail.com. I'm on Twitter at markjstock. You're seeing the trend here, right? You can find me, no problem. My work involves extensive use of numerical computing and a process-centric approach to design to create still, video, real-time, interactive installations with seamless interfaces featuring detailed and convincing movements and interrelationships. I avoid commercial rendering software, preferring to own the process from start to finish. Conceptually, I'm inspired by the ability of decentralized collections of subjects to, when in motion, self-organize into complex structures whose ensemble motion is greater than the sum of their original parts and which belie the simplicity of their algorithms. Themes present in my work include emerging system dynamics, environmental adaptation, the concept of fluid as both material and motion, self-organized criticality of nonlinear systems, tension between humanity and the natural world, and computation as a mediator between natural and virtual realities. I often get asked how I got into making artwork, and uh, the story goes that in 1999, I just graduated with a master's and was working in a small company in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, we were writing uh, computational fluid dynamics software. Uh, where we were trying to use computer code and algorithms to simulate the motions of fluids. And my job was to make what was once a two-dimensional code be able to simulate three dimensions. I found a bug in the code. Um, all physical systems uh, are constrained by their energy. Um, but when you write a computer program to simulate physics, uh, you can make any sort of mistake you want, and uh, the results aren't constrained by real physics because you are writing an algorithm. So somewhere in my algorithm there was an error and the virtual energy in the system was increasing exponentially, which is obviously wrong if you want to actually use your code for a real problem. And I was looking through the code, and it was written in Fortran 77, and it was just all capital letters and numbers and parentheses and brackets and I's and J's and K's, and nothing really like, led to where the problem was. Um, I looked at the output, which was a list of numbers, a list of three numbers per line, tens of thousands of lines. That's not going to help me. I'm looking at those. This all looks like just numbers, just like gibberish. But then I decided, well, since I'm trying to simulate a three-dimensional system, why not visualize it as a three-dimensional sculpture? I had been playing with a, a, a program called a ray tracer, which is a way to make a virtual photograph of a virtual scene using mathematics and computation. And I decided to, to render, essentially, these computational elements that we were simulating to render them as sticks in three-dimensional space, and they had orientation and they had strength. And I thought maybe if I know what to expect, I'll make this image and see what came out of it. And I was expecting to see a, a simple tornado. I was simulating a very simple rotating vortex. I expected to see two lines rotating around each other. Instead, what I got was a complete mess of white chalk bits and reflections and inner reflections, and it was a sculpture like I'd never seen before. And I immediately knew something was up here, um, not just in the, uh, the numerical sense for my job, but in the artistic sense. This was an amazing image that no one has ever seen before. Uh, but immediately, I knew where the bug was. I thought, uh, well, all these chalk sticks are different sizes, and they should all have been the same size. Let's go to the line of code that changes their strength. And there it was. I used a J instead of an I, or an I plus 1 instead of an I some stupid error that it took me days to try to find otherwise. But by imaging it, by seeing it in three dimensions, it was plainly obvious. And this is really kind of the, the, the dichotomy of, uh, of uh, 
the virtual world and the, the real world, the physical world, in that uh, a human is innately uh, capable of seeing and understanding things in three dimensions, whereas a computer is just a device that multiplies and subtracts and adds and maybe does a few logical things. Um, how can that then get even close to what a human can do? And the answer is it just does billions or trillions of multiplications and additions instead of what a human can do with a, a meat brain in a fraction of a second. So after I rendered that image, uh, I looked at it and I looked at it and I showed it to my friends and I thought, hey, this is weird. And that week I spent the, uh, most of my work time, don't tell my bosses, uh, rendering more images, uh, running more simulations, uh, getting more uh, imagery of this strange ethereal virtual world of fluids where the things that we normally don't see, all the turbulence and air are all around us, where you can make that solid. You can instantiate it as if it were a physical solid object in the real world, reflecting light the way real things do. And that kind of opened up a, a whole field of art for me, I think, um, in the, the creation of imagery of things that are otherwise invisible. So a lot of what you've seen is physical artwork, but that has to come from the computer. Let me show you where that happens. Welcome to my studio. This is where it all happens. Hi, welcome to the virtual part of my studio tour. Since most of my work is done on computers, I figure I should show you really the true studio in this operation, and that is my computer. So we'll be recording from my computer, and I'll be showing you some still images, videos, and three-dimensional files from my uh, 20 years of creating artwork. You can see a lot of this on my website, markjstock.com. And as I alluded to earlier, some 3D printing of mountains and cities you can see on my other sites. This is where tinymountain.com sends you. You can see 100, uh, 970 different 3D printed cities and terrains and things. Uh, also on minicity.com, M-I-N-I-C-T-Y, you can check out a whole bunch of our 3D printed cities. And also you can buy things there if you'd like. Finally, let's just start a little screen show, a little uh, slideshow. I'm just going to let this run as we talk about some stuff. So I've done a whole variety of artwork over the last 10 years. Uh, I've written a whole bunch of different codes. I, I feel kind of that I'm like a tool builder in that I really enjoy uh, writing a piece of software and then seeing what it does. And that software typically is, is, is going to simulate some aspect of nature. Uh, I tend toward fluids, but not all of my artwork uh, reflects fluid dynamics. Um, some of these are very, very simple algorithms. In fact, um, on, uh, on Sunday, I'll be doing a little lecture about how to create some of the work like this on a very, very simple computer with a very, very few lines of code. Um, there's some landscape images that you see in here. These are just simple, simple renderings sometimes of things. Uh, there's fractal behavior in a lot of this, although I don't explicitly generate fractals. Uh, there's uh, some artificial uh, depth of field, some camera tricks. Uh, but again, these are all done on a computer. There's no photography involved at, at all in any of this. There's no, there's no real smoke. There's no uh, real ink. This is all, this is all digital. Some of these you might see in, uh, in the rest of the video. Uh, some of these are printed uh, on uh, paper. Some are on canvas. Uh, some of the newer pieces, the Immaculate Collision series, like this one, are uh, printed on transparency and laminated between two slabs of glass. So they are, they are nearly impervious to all sorts of damage. Um, and they're also transparent, so they can uh, be uh, hung in a window or aw away from a wall, and they have a, a very three-dimensional feel to them. Some of these images are from real-time simulations. Some took weeks to compute and to render. <laughs> Why is that in there? This one's called Open House, done in 2006. This is Amorph. This little bit of the Grand Canyon. Oh, that's from Atoms. Everything is made of Atoms. This green tendril. These are those little chalky bits of, uh, of vortex particles. 
Here we have, uh, oh, I forgot the names of some of these. Some of the things we can look at are, uh, for example, some videos that I've submitted to, to things in the past. This one is called Guernica. This is a two-dimensional fluid simulation through Picasso's Guernica. Uh, the concept here was that um, uh, war today and conflict today is often kind of hidden behind the scenes. Uh, and we uh, try to decipher what happened through the fog of war. Uh, here's a little clip from a video that is playing at the 100 Federal Building on the big new LED screen they have there. Uh, this is an hour-long video. Uh, the colors shift subtly throughout the whole thing, and these slow uh, fluid motions uh, continue throughout. There's a new video at 100 Federal coming up soon. It, uh, I don't quite know when it'll be open, but uh, I will have another hour-long video there as well. Here is a, uh, a sort of uh, demo simulation that I did about uh, seven or eight years ago, and this is a particular fluid dynamic instability, but the, uh, the shape of this became very interesting, so I let that, uh, I let that run. Pardon the, uh, the loud keystrokes. Uh, I have one of those old IBM clicky key keyboards. This is called Smoke Water Fire. This is one of the first videos that I ever made. Uh, these are, uh, again, fluid, fluid particles, fluid elements, all interacting with each other and uh, rendered with a, uh, an accurate lighting model. This is sort of like the deconstruction of a sphere in a sort of uh, uh, virtual universe. This one is called the yin and yang are fractal. Uh, one thing you, uh, you pick up when you study two-dimensional, three-dimensional fluid turbulence is that there are cascades of motions and shapes. And in this one, very clearly, you can see this spiral, this sort of yin-yang spiral that's echoed on large, medium, and very small scales. Let's look at a few other things. This is a clip from a piece that will be at the 100 Federal Building shortly. Uh, in these series of clips, I took a piece of well-known artwork and sort of uh, deconstructed the color. I pulled all the color out and made them these moving particles, these moving pixels. But the, the shape of the artwork still remains kind of under the surface of these, uh, these cascading, twirling kind of rivulets of motion. And tell me when you, uh, tell me when you recognize it. I'm stepping forward uh, 10 seconds at a time here. Uh, now, it's, now it's kind of obvious. Each of the clips runs for about one and a half to three minutes, and it goes through several phases. This is kind of the closing phase where the motion is sort of dying down. An interactive piece that uh, my is friend made of atoms. Oh, I guess you can hear it. It's an interactive new media artwork that explores the entangled and ever-changing relationship between the body and technology. The piece draws parallels between participants and their digital. This is all done with a Microsoft Connect, expressing and both GPU as a whole and, and a real-time three-dimensional fluid simulator. Parts. The first time that had been done in 2013. Are inextricably linked. The focus of this work is the exploration and rethinking of the relationship and interaction between the body and technology as relational forces, rather than separate collections of parts. Everything is made of atoms is presented on a flat screen monitor or projected on that a was wall a lot of fun at eye level. Just above the screen is a Microsoft Connect sensor. The Boston Harbor Islands Pavilion had uh, one of my pieces. It's a uh, again a real time work. This is simulated and created. Every frame is unique and new. This took wind data from the Harbor Islands and translated it into the. Uh, the wavy motion of grasses, and in the other phase of this artwork, there's sort of a wavy motion of the uh, the harbor itself, and this is all real time generated from a small computer inside the Harbor Islands Pavilion. There's the waves. It's a very low resolution screen. And finally, this is a piece for the inside of the um, Boston Convention Center. 
This is a piece done with B Benjamin Bray. This is uh, a simulation called 1000 Years. And it is sort of uh, intended to mimic the uh, ocean circulation in the North Atlantic, where uh, water is heated from the sun near the equator. And that begins a motion of uh, warm water one direction and cool water another direction. The small black particles are the the dust and things that fall into the ocean from the top, and those are collecting at the bottom slowly. This runs for only 60 seconds. Uh, it's it compresses a whole 10,000, a whole 1,000 years of uh, nature into a very short, very short time. So it's playing on the 200 some odd foot wide screen inside the convention center. All right, let's look at some real-time stuff. Uh, forgive the kind of simple colors here. This is a demo that I put together about a year or two ago where in real-time we can kind of play with a sort of virtual two-dimensional fluid. Um, this is running on a machine that's about five years old. Uh, in newer machines, this can run a lot faster and higher resolution. But we can spin it around and watch the fluids turn around and these these little vortexes will just spin for hours um, I'm actually uh, I've, I've developed a new computational method to do this that has much less viscosity than every other person's method um, usually when you see a real-time fluid simulator it looks really goopy and slow but uh, this this is gonna stay uh, dynamic and fast for a very very long time because I've I've discovered a way to to get rid of a lot of the things that slow down these fluid simulations and it's lots of, lots of fun to play with there's another one that I was working on that is considering uh, gravitational motion we'll just add a bunch of particles here and this is sort of like um, a galaxy uh, we're computing the gravitational attraction among a whole large number of particles and this also runs in real time. I'm spinning it around right here. Anyways, I hope you're enjoying it. Um, hope you enjoyed the talk. Uh, unfortunately, with COVID, you can't come by and see this in person right now. But when all this clears up, uh, I would love to have you in to show you more of this.